Living organisms on Earth are under constant pressure to compete for resources, a fight that has, over billions of years and countless generations, given rise to the amazing diversity of life we see around us. From microscopic aquatic bacteria to thousand-year-old groves of trees, living things have acquired characteristics that uniquely allow them to survive even in the most difficult environments on the planet. Among these characteristics is the natural appearance that can help living organisms avoid predators, attract mates, and acquire resources. Found in the feathers of peacocks, the camouflage of chameleons, and the wings of butterflies is a special trait that grants them their extravagant and dynamic coloration. Nanoscale features interact with the light falling on these animals in a dazzling display of the ingenuity of nature. Known as photonic crystals, studying how these features are created and how they are used in nature could inspire novel technologies for optical computing and data transfer, fabrics and coatings, and photovoltaic energy harvesting. Colors are abundant in nature, and bright, vivid coloration, or the lack thereof, can provide various benefits to all manner of living organisms. The petals of flowers attract pollinators, which carry pollen and help the flowering plant reproduce and spread. Some animals may have fur that blends in with their surroundings, camouflaging them to avoid predation or to make them more efficient hunters. Other animals take the opposite approach, displaying brightly colored patterns that stand out and warn others to stay away in a phenomenon known as aposematism. Fireflies use a biochemical reaction to create light, both to find mates and to deter potential predators. The anglerfish that dwell in the depths of the ocean use a similar bioluminescence to instead attract prey. Over the hundreds of millions of years since the first incidents of vision appeared, the interaction of life with light has been a tremendous driving force for evolution of features that can detect light as well as those that can control it. The most common method to impart color is with the use of pigments, small molecules that preferentially absorb specific wavelengths. Chlorophyll pigments give leaves their characteristic green color, while melanin pigments are responsible for the coloration of many animals. Another method for creating color is bioluminescence, an enzyme-driven reaction that releases energy in the form of light. This phenomenon is particularly useful for living organisms found in darker environments, such as the aforementioned anglerfish and fireflies, and is even present in some species of fungi. Yet a third, unique method of manipulating light provides its advantages without relying on pigments or biochemical reactions. Structural coloration relies on nanoscale features on the bodies of living things to selectively interact with different wavelengths of light absorbing and reflecting that light in a manner dependent on the structure and angle. The colors arising from structural features are generally brighter than from pigments, and unlike bioluminescence, do not require continuous energy input. Structural coloration is found across all domains of life, whether flashy peacock tails or microscopic algae, and has fascinated humans for millennia. Manipulating light and color has been integral to humans' rapid development as a species and has given rise to countless technological advances. While it may have been inadvertent, nanotechnology has played a role in many of those advances. An especially striking example can be seen in ancient glassware, such as the Lycurgus cup, which appears red when illuminated from behind and green when illuminated from the front. This spectacular effect is due to gold and silver nanoparticles dispersed throughout the glass. When seen from the front, the silver nanoparticles reflect light almost evenly across visible wavelengths, while, illuminated from the back, the gold nanoparticles scatter blue light more effectively, resulting in a deep red color. Staining glass in vibrant colors using metal compounds had been done for centuries prior to the creation of the Lycurgus cup although the ancient Romans did not know exactly how metals or nanoparticles could impart color to their creations. Similarly, ancient humans did not know that nanoscale features were responsible for the bright metallic exoskeleton of beetles or the chameleon's ability to change its appearance. Despite the first instances of structural coloration having been noted in prehistoric times, it wasn't until the 17th century that scientists distinguished structural coloration from pigment coloration. 
In 1665, Robert Hooke examined the tail feathers of peacocks under a microscope and noted that by means of various positions, the feathers could reflect different colors. Having observed layers of thin plates within the feather structure, Hooke suspected that the dazzling color was not due to pigments, but rather those thin plates, a hypothesis that Isaac Newton supported 40 years later. In the late 1700s, Thomas Young demonstrated that light could behave as a wave, a concept that would be instrumental in explaining how photonic crystals worked. Since light behaved as a wave, it could interact with matter in a way that created destructive or constructive interference depending on the wavelength and angle of the incident light. However, microscopy had not yet advanced enough to understand the nanoscale features behind natural structural coloration, and the field of photonic crystals advanced, unaware of the multitude of biological systems that could offer newfound inspiration to scientific questions. Photonic crystals are constructed of repeating, alternating nanoscale layers of materials with different refractive indexes. In the simplest case of a one-dimensional photonic crystal, these layers are films with a thickness on the order of 100 nanometers, similar to the visible light spectrum. When light, consisting of many wavelengths, hits the surface of this stack of thin films, some light reflects while some travels into the material. Because of the difference in refractive index, the light that travels into the material is deflected to a different angle, referred to as refraction. At the next interface, some light is again reflected and some is refracted. When the light that is reflected at each interface leaves the structure, it has traveled different distances, and therefore each wave has shifted phase relative to another. This shift in phase leads to interference, which can be constructive if the waves are out of phase by even multiples of 180 degrees, destructive if the waves are out of phase by odd multiples of 180 degrees, or partially destructive and constructive otherwise. The path length of incident light and resulting phase shift is determined by the angle of incidence of light, the thickness of the films, the refractive index, and the wavelength of interest. For example, the spatial shift corresponding to a phase shift of 180 degrees for light with wavelength of 500 nanometers would be 250 nanometers, while that for light with a wavelength of 700 nanometers would be 350 nanometers. Thus, with interference from several layers of thin films, a one-dimensional photonic crystal would reflect and amplify only a specific band of wavelengths via constructive interference, and other wavelengths would be effectively removed. This principle can be extended to two dimensions, for example with stacks of parallel rods, and three dimensions with periodically arranged blocks. In 1987, Two landmark papers published separately by Eli Yablanovich and Sajiv John made the first crucial step in bringing photonic crystals to practical applications. These papers emphasized the ability of photonic crystals to control light propagation and limit undesirable spontaneous emission, properties sought after in many optical devices. As techniques for fabricating materials on the nanoscale advanced, Photonic crystals that manipulated light in the visible range began to see use in light-emitting diodes, lasers, optical filters and reflection coatings, optic waveguides and fibers, and sensors. Photonic crystals in certain applications became so essential to the efficiency and power of the devices that those without photonic crystals were made obsolete, while in other applications, photonic crystals found only limited use. A major reason for the limited practicality of photonic crystals was, and still remains, the difficulty of fabricating photonic crystals that operate in the visible spectrum on a mass scale. Currently, photonic crystals are synthesized using layer-by-layer -layer methods, such as lithography, molecular beam epitaxy, or vapor deposition, subtractive manufacturing, such as electrochemical or laser etching, and self-assembly of nanoparticle or polymer components. Achieving precise control over crystal formation, required for many applications of photonic crystals, necessitates complex fabrication techniques and strict quality control, both of which limit the production rate, especially for three-dimensional photonic crystals. 
This limitation has encouraged some researchers to look to nature for inspiration and to understand how biological photonic crystals first arose. Structural coloration offers many advantages to living organisms that possess it. The morpho butterflies of Central and South America use structural coloration to attract mates and safeguard their territory. Despite their small size, the brilliant blue color produced by photonic crystals on their wings makes these butterflies visible for more than half a mile. Fruits of the marble berry, the most intensely blue object found in nature, are irresistible to birds, which eat the berry and disperse its seeds far from the original plant. Marine algae use photonic crystals of calcium carbonate, which efficiently scatter ultraviolet light. This allows them to live closer to the water surface and receive more light for photosynthesis without the negative effects of UV exposure. Over time, as beneficial mutations provided such advantages to living organisms, they were passed down and refined to what we see today. Unlike their synthetic counterparts, naturally occurring photonic crystals are composed of the building blocks of biology, proteins, polysaccharides, lipids, and minerals. The crystals are deposited by cellular activity, including protein assembly and membrane folding guided by the living organism's genetic code. At the nanoscale, the wings of morpho butterflies contain ridges shaped like trees and composed primarily of chitin, a long-chain polysaccharide. Rows upon rows of these ridges are arranged to form a single scale of the wing. An immense effort during the formation of the butterfly's wings is necessary to orchestrate the fine detail on which these photonic crystals rely. Similarly, the nanoscale keratin rods responsible for the iridescence of peacock feathers must be carefully arranged during development. It is this precise control that could offer a novel method to manufacture photonic crystals on a mass scale and to revolutionize many fields related to optics and photonics. Biological inspiration has already improved existing commercially available optical technologies and shows promise for more. By studying the structure of firefly lanterns, researchers determined that nano and micro scale ridges increased transmission of light out of the lantern and were able to modify existing methods to pattern light emitting diodes for a 50% increase in light output. The wings of the morpho butterfly were the basis for a self-assembling polymer-based paint that produces vivid blue, green, and red hues without the potentially toxic pigments and stabilizers used in conventional paints. The spines of the sea mouse are composed of repeating protein alpha helices stacked into nanotubes and periodically arranged with exactly 88 layers in the spine wall. When the sea mouse is submerged underwater, the difference in refractive index between the water and nanotubes is enough for the spines to act as photonic crystals, passing bright iridescent light down the length of the spines. Environmental conditions and cellular activity maintain the balance needed to deposit these nanotubes. While the exact conditions are not understood, growing the sea mouse cells in the laboratory has been achieved. Sea mouse spines could serve as inspiration for photonic crystal fibers, an existing technology that exceeds optic fibers in their capacity to transmit large quantities of information over long distances with little loss of signal power. The photonic crystals of another marine creature, the lobed comb jellyfish, may help in developing novel synthesis methods not just for photonic crystal fibers, but also for computer chips that function with light instead of electricity. Dynamic structural coloration, seen in cephalopods and chameleons that can change their appearance at will, can provide novel benefits due to its stimulus-responsive nature. Chameleons are able to control a fine upper layer of protein crystals organized in a triangular lattice to change the lattice spacing and thus the wavelength of light reflected, and a lower layer of crystals to change how much light is reflected. Fine, active control of the lattice spacing of photonic crystals could be used in devices that need to quickly change their optical properties, such as lasers or synthetic camouflage. Conversely, some species of leaf beetle are able to change their appearance by controlling moisture levels in their photonic crystals and thus changing the refractive index difference.
This ability to respond to a change in the surroundings could be used for sensors, where the presence of a chemical or biological agent would cause a color shift detectable by camera. Synthetic analogs of biological photonic crystals using graphite nanotubes have been integrated into optical sensors and can respond to changes in temperature and mechanical force, with applications for healthcare monitoring, food packaging, and anti-counterfeit measures. Currently, biological photonic crystals cannot be synthesized in laboratory settings on a large scale, and many of the more complex features of animal structural coloration cannot be replicated. Interdisciplinary research is striving to understand the evolutionary, developmental, and environmental factors behind natural photonic crystals and to apply these lessons to pressing scientific issues. Through trial and error over hundreds of millions of years, nature has developed ingenious technologies, and the importance of learning from and preserving nature cannot be understated. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like or subscribe for more educational content. Check out some of the other videos on the channel to keep learning more about biology, chemistry, physics, history, and many more topics.